In this video, we will be looking at various terrain pieces utilizing paper products, glue, and flour. Welcome folks to my studio and welcome to the second episode of On the Workbench. And uh, in this series, this is a new series that uh, started with the creation of a towel game mat. If you haven't seen that video, check that out. That is the first episode for this series, uh, despite the fact that I didn't name it that uh, back then, but it is going to be incorporated into the series as the first episode. So uh, what the series, uh, before I, I begin anything, actually, I want to give a, a great thanks to our patrons who have, uh, who do a lot to keep uh, the studio running. And, and uh, for those of you that have supported us on War Games Vault with my very own Scratch Builder Monthly, thank you very much. Again, that helps the studio a great deal. Now, this series and basically my entire channel uh, is primarily a crafting channel, and uh, this series is going to explore really low budget, uh, sometimes very strange techniques uh, for making terrain, and more importantly, using that terrain in our games. That's the most important thing, is that all of these scratch builds are not just scratch builds, they are things that I use in my games. Uh, techniques that are as low budget as possible. I use recycled items, uh, things like that we will explore. And on occasion, yeah, we will uh, spend a little bit more and use techniques that are more well known. But uh, in order to get the terrain that we want for the uh, games that we want to play. Okay. So in this particular uh, episode, we're going to look at paper products, a combination of paper crop uh, products, uh, tin foil, flour and glue. And what do those things all have in common? Well, nothing really, but we're going to see what we can make with them. Let's go to the workbench. So for this project, we're going to need a little bit of water, so a cup of water. Uh, that's going to be important. A little bit of flour. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more here. And then uh, here's our um, just regular uh, paper towels. We have our coffee filters. And uh, for tools, uh, scissors might be useful. Um, and I have some pliers because sometimes I like to really squeeze the uh, paper material with the glue and uh, that kind of helps water and uh, my tacky glue we're definitely going to need a good amount of glue so I'm going to take some glue and just put a little bit on this cap it just makes it easier um, okay and uh, we could also use Elmer's glue it doesn't really matter I'm using tacky glue but just put a little bit of glue on the cap and then I already cut my little uh, base. And for the first couple of rocks, I, I like to use the hot glue gun if I can. It depends on how much moisture I use on them. Uh, so we're going to take the bigger piece that I just broke. And this is coffee filter. We're going to wrinkle it up nice. Okay. Just to start that wrinkling process. And then I'm going to start soaking it in glue. And this is very messy, by the way. Uh, and I, I, I don't care. It's kind of fun. <laughs> but it is a bit of a messy process. And just kind of get that glue all over the, the place. And really, like, you can make it flat. You can make them nice and round, whatever shape you want. I'm going to give it a, a bit of an irregular shape, okay? And then what I do is I just, I have my little flour here i just dip it in the flour that helps so that the stickiness doesn't like tear it up you can also use a little water on your fingers uh, which i occasionally do is your fingers get really like scrungy 
and uh and that's it that's all it is okay so here is one stone and let me see if the hot glue uh the hot glue may not work in this case because of the flour but actually no that's not true all right we're still experimenting with this stuff so we're experimenting with this together okay so there's my first piece uh, and this is paper towel now not coffee filter uh it's okay whichever one they both have their own little advantages and disadvantages and then no water notice how i'm trying not to use the water uh it becomes sometimes it does become a little bit important especially if it's sticking to your fingers up here okay and what i'm gonna do is with my brush just give it a little bit extra moisture make sure that it's um not going to remain soft so now this has to dry and that's exactly what we're going to do let it dry and then come back we could fill it up with kitty litter and all that stuff i didn't use any armature or anything like that uh but you can gets your fingers very dirty every product every terrain piece here gets your fingers very dirty but i think it's really worth it and what i want you guys to focus on is the texture that this technique uh, brings out in rock making. And uh, this is another thing that you can do with uh, paper towels this time. So we move from coffee filters to paper towels. Uh, let's go check it out. Okay, so this is a bit of a strange one. I have here on one side tin foil, and these are very thin shelf uh rocks like slate right and uh, this one requires a slightly different uh preparation than this side this side has the tissue that we've been using notice that the rock is much thicker uh you can still make it a uh, shelf like but it is much thicker and you don't have a lot of space in between with the tinfoil you get more space in between so usually i fill this up with other Pit bits of rock okay so that's what we're going to do on this side uh on this side we're just going to use the tissue so basically i start with a skeleton of cardboard i put a piece of tin foil to cover the corrugation up here because this is really thick cardboard cover my corrugation here at the edge with uh hot glue and then just hot glue all of this tin foil okay the tin foil is just uh wrapped up and flattened and given irregular shapes shelf like and then you just glue it onto the rock to make this sort of strange rock formation right it's like a wall of all this shelf like rock now when we're done we decorate it on top with a lot of vegetation and um some uh flocking powder and once everything is painted it's going to look really good and you can have plants coming out here we can have a downed log with roots you know whatever we want but let's finish this up so that we have an example of it all right let's get this messy stuff going now what i do for this one is i dip it i'm gonna have my water here i dip it in the water this one requires a little bit more water so that we can really flatten the uh tissue and then uh make sure we have a nice healthy layer of glue because the glue is everything i mean you want to have a nice uh coating of glue and before flattening it i like to add glue in the in the middle so that there's glue inside as well and uh and yeah you, you need that glue that glue is essential okay so uh but you could see how like the wrinkles develop and everything um it's kind of cool kind of messy um reminds me of my old days when i was crafting you know like a little kid just getting everything everywhere now i'm gonna dip it into my flour okay and it's <laughs> It's like you're cooking something, uh, but there you go. You dip it into the flour once it's had all the glue, then it's not as sticky anymore. And that glue will harden 
I'm just going to uh, use hot glue right now, but we could use white glue if we want to, but I'm just going to use the white glue and just stick it in there. Uh, later, we brush off the excess, okay, and then you start building up that uh, rock wall. As it dries, uh, we can go back and kind of flatten them a little bit more before they dry fully. And then uh, that's it, okay? Okay, so this side of the rock wall is already done. And notice how, you know, that looks pretty good. There's a couple of spots in there. I'll fill that in. Um, but I try to get as much uh, tissue rock in there as possible. Now, for this side, all I do is fill it with glue. Take my brush. Make sure that the tin foil is completely covered. Okay, now this one has more gaps, so we're going to put uh, fill in those gaps in a little bit. Okay, but just kind of fill in. It, this has a lot of glue. And just make sure that my foil is covered as much as possible with that glue. Now this helps eliminate the sheen and it will also help uh, with the texturing right now. And then what we're going to do is once we're done, we just cover it in flour. And uh, it really helps to give it additional texture. But it also just helps cover the sheen a little bit. And if I want to, I can add some uh, tissue, wet tissue, and continue to cover it further. This kind of stuff, I like to have another tray where I could just like... You know, do this. It's just a lot quicker. And make sure that we get everything in between. And there we go. Just pour it all on. Okay. So... There we go. We have the tin foil covered. Okay. And now some of the tin foil will show and that's okay because these are minerals and things that are poking out of the rock. So that's quite all right. So you can see like the different, the reason why I did this so that you can see the two different techniques. Okay. And uh, now I'm what I'm going to do is wait for this to dry a little, add a little more glue down there and then we can finish this up. Um, but it's really not a bad piece and it creates a very interesting uh, rock wall and it, for 172 scale it's going to work great miniatures can actually you know climb up there or something. <laughs> The Fey World is one of my favorite fantasy themes. Uh, I've often uh, wanted to play in uh, tabletop games that depict my own ideas of the Fey World. Now, it is very possible to make a terrain geared towards some pretty fantastic Fey realms um, using very low budget materials. And, of course, using your imagination to bring those worlds to life. So with this terrain piece, and I call this Shards of Reality. And that's because there's a portal in here that leads to uh, one of the Fey Realms. So here is our armature, and all I've done is made these uh, long, thin strips of tinfoil a few like crumbled pieces of tinfoil here for the rock base then attached everything with hot glue and then we have like these other archways that are going to be incomplete and uh this top piece here which is almost like a roof so now that we have the armature and this is all on cardboard i'm gonna do my edge here of the corrugation and then we're gonna start adding our stone to these pieces so this one uh the strategy is a little different uh 
I already, I, I coated with a little bit of hot glue. I attached the paper and then I coated in glue and with this wet brush, I kind of brush everything. Uh, and we are going to use our um, flour as we normally do. But uh, this one is, is slightly different. And we got to secure that a little more. So I'm going to add a little more hot glue to this. And make sure that stone is secure. And we'll add a few small stones to the, the piece. But basically what this does is it covers the tin foil with a hard covering. Um, and it adds a very interesting texture. All right. Get my flour back in here and make sure that we pour on enough of it. And that will provide some cool texture. And then we're going to add a few stones to that as well. Okay, so here's the strange uh, fey structure or uh, whatever ruin. Uh, we're going to paint this like a uh, tree, right? So it's an old uh, tree-like structure. And then we have some rocks. So these will be painted differently. And notice how I added my kitty litter. And I forgot to add my rim here. Duh. Uh, but anyway, so here are the stones uh using the same technique that i used in the beginning this is all the same technique with the exception of the wood area here and then the rest i fill with sawdust plain and simple just sawdust and then when everything gets spray painted i begin to pick out and differentiate the different structures so now this had a layer of glue and it's covered in flour and now we gotta let this weird stuff dry now i'm gonna add something here uh some kind of thing maybe uh, an eagle head i don't know something maybe a, a nice tree man head like a kind of a almost creepy dark tree man head that that would be kind of cool um and we're gonna add that to the collection of drying material uh but here is a close-up of the finished portal and this is the shards of reality and you can uh, see the shards because it is shards of plastic if you can see that it is shards of plastic that make up this portal with some hot glue now the plastic that i use is the same plastic that the reaper miniatures came in and i just recycle that i say that i recycle it and this is a, a bandage which makes excellent mushroom tops okay so we have some mushrooms and we have the face of a spriggan right here with the two gems and we have one portal open the other portals not open uh so yeah where will these portals lead probably to the spriggan realm uh which is another fey realm and here are some uh the mushrooms as well okay giant mushrooms and I'm waiting for those to dry so I can paint those, make them nice and colorful. And we have a very nice and different terrain piece, which costs me very, very little. It's all tissue product. And if you want to see how I finish this uh, giant mushroom forest, this is also Fade Terrain. You can check out Scratch Builder Monthly in May. I'm going to have a whole article on uh, designing a fey realm because julie and i will be playing thanks to that reaper miniature the fungal queen we're going to be playing uh a uh, a series of games that uh demonstrate a war in the fey realms between the different fey realms all right the different courts so uh terrain coming okay so this is perhaps one of the more interesting pieces and this represents a very decrepit ruin, uh, again, not built the way you would normally uh, think of a, of a ruined building. Um, there is this structure here, which still remains. And obviously, all these stones have, like, uh, broken up. Um, and it, it's just an interesting piece. Now, uh, this is not finished. Uh, we still need to add stones here. And the whole idea of this was to really push the material. This, 
This utilized no armature whatsoever. It didn't use the tin foil from the previous build. It was just making clumps and adding them together. Okay, uh, this took about an hour uh, and a half. And I think this would benefit from an armature. Um, I, I think doing it in the future, I would probably definitely use an armature. Uh, it would put things together much quickly. Um, there are some stones that are missing here. Uh, but basically, you know, that's it. it. It's a very kind of strange ruin. And of course, once we're finished, we're going to add some vines, some uh, flocking powder. And uh, right now, you can't really notice it. This is still drying. Uh, you can't really notice it, but I used some of that paper to make a rocky floor. glue and all that good stuff and then here we have some mushrooms and this is a piece of cave terrain we're going to be doing more of this and this is using coffee filter okay and to make these stalagmites and this also is using coffee filter um look at that texture i'm gonna hope i'm hoping that the lighting is good but look at the texture of those rocks and that's the coffee filter um and i i think the with the tissue paper you get a slightly different uh effect okay but it it, it works very well and this is another fey artifact like a stone with a weird face this was coffee uh coffee paper coffee filter and just some random logs and and log debris and stuff to use a scatter terrain and my shelf of rock again look at the nice texture that these pieces uh this paper really makes and it makes it on its own i don't do that it does that all on its own i don't have to carve anything i don't sculpt it it just does it on its own and this side is the tinfoil side tinfoil and flower also makes excellent excellent rock work so if you want to support us on Patreon, uh, I will have a bonus videos. There's a whole uh, part of this series called The Creature Creator. And The Creature Creator goes over the power of clay and how I use clay to bring some, uh, some of my figures to life to use on the tabletop. Uh, and I also go over other things. There will be another aspect of that video that will look at simple techniques like this to create things like golems, elementals, giant worms, a bunch of different things. So, and I think you'll be surprised at some of the things you can use to make ghostly figures and other things that you can use for your RPGs as well as for uh, the tabletop. You know, really, I have no shame. I use anything. <laughs> all right. So, and all these things uh, supplement and fill in the gaps of my actual miniature collection. So, those videos, those, uh, if you like sci fi, I do have a component video uh, of this series that also deals with sci fi buildings and starships. Uh, the Starship Maker will probably be a video that's over on Patreon. And of course, Scratch Builder Monthly is going to take all of these concepts together in one place with extra tips and maybe some extra fluff material or battle reports and things like that that I'll throw into the magazine to make it a little more interesting. So uh, thank you, everyone. And I will see you in the next video, in the next uh on the workbench uh, series, we're going to be looking at another towel game mat, and that's going to be our desert mat because we have of gods and mortals that I'm trying to uh, get started, and that's going to require some desert terrain, all right? So I'll see you in the next one, and I hope that this has been of some use or interest. Thank you very much, guys.